Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 242, I want to revisit a topic that we've talked about a few times, and that is mental health and employee well-being in a crisis. Certainly, this is an area where mental health considerations have to be an integral part of how you think about your crisis management planning. Um, It can't be an afterthought. And I think the pandemic that we've experienced over the last four years with COVID uh, has taught us even more than we already knew about the impact um, and the need to acknowledge um, mental health challenges when it comes to crisis management. There are a number of ways in which prolonged crisis situations impact employees' mental health uh, and therefore impact your organization's ability to be healthy. Um, These include things like stress, anxiety, burnout. Um, It's important to find ways to identify this early and intervene uh, in those challenges. But I think it also highlights the critical role that leaders play in setting the tone for your organization's culture and how that prioritizes the safety of your team. And that includes prioritizing mental health and well-being of your employees through open communication and leading by example. I also think that this um, is even more challenging, and I've talked about this before, for those of us in the resilience leadership space, because we're the ones that have to really lead our organizations through these very difficult crisis situations. Part of dealing with the mental health challenges in a crisis is creating uh, a safe space for dialogue. Creating it, what we mean there is really creating an environment where employees feel safe discussing these kinds of mental health challenges without fear of retribution or some sort of stigma. We also see some solutions to some of these challenges today that we didn't have in the past. Um, The ability to work remotely, uh, hybrid and flexible work arrangements are a great support strategy. uh, And understanding how to offer those and viewing those as a way to help prioritize your employees' mental health, giving them, it gives them more control and flexibility Um, to manage their work and personal life together and the demands of those in a more effective way. Companies, of course, should provide access to mental health resources um, through your employee assistance program or some other capability related to your health benefits. That can include counseling services, uh, stress management programs, and mental health days Uh, and how those resources can be integrated into the workplace. I mean, even today, I was out visiting a a potential high school for my uh, older daughter who is wrapping up middle school soon, and they had flex spaces available um, throughout the building, and they're often used for small group discussions, but it was also like the one they took us into was kind of a cozy place to take a break. Uh, And my my daughter is very um, introverted, just like I am, um, and, Sometimes I need that to recharge, and that might give her um, – it really stood out to me as a place to be able to do that. But those kind, that kind of access to capabilities can really help with the mental health challenges in a crisis. The next is just training for managers. Uh, managers, we, we want to help leaders in the organization recognize signs of mental health challenges amongst the team, um, coach them on how to check in with the team about how things are going, and then how to best approach those conversations in an effective and compassionate way. There's also this idea that um, enhancing employee resilience through team building activities and employee engagement, um, professional development opportunities in your organization, or even recognition programs can help foster a sense of belonging and purpose. Regular check-ins are important and having some feedback mechanisms for different types of personalities, but sometimes it's as important as just asking your team how they're doing and then listen with with empathy and understanding, seeking to learn more about um, their well-being and how things are going for them, and using these feedback mechanisms to adjust strategies to better support mental health. Lastly is after the crisis, of course, we want to learn what we can from that crisis, the importance of continued support, 
after crisis, learning from the experience to improve your future response through your lessons learned process and building a more resilient and mentally healthy workforce. In all of this, I would encourage you to make sure that you're looking out for your own mental health. Um, there are a lot of resources out there for emergency managers and business continuity leaders and resilience professionals to look at. Um, you can always call 988 for support uh, as a place to go. And you can always reach out to a friend or other colleagues in the business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communication space for help to have that anchor outside of work, keep you grounded in reality, and help keep you uh, as stress-free and performing as well as you can. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.